It really does add that little spice to it, I think. Hey guys, so those are the photos I made using the technique I learned from Peter McKinnon's tutorial on textures and grunges. And I learned a lot doing it myself. And I just want to showcase that to you guys. And let's just get into it, into Photoshop. If you're lacking textures to use in your photos, I have a free texture pack available down in the description below. Check it out. So if you don't know the method Peter McKinnon uses to add textures, I could just show you real quick. Okay, so what you want to do first is bring both of your photos of the texture and your regular photo. This was just a picture I took downtown Reno. It was just of the beat up sidewalk. And if you have a color photo, what you can do is then select the, the picture, go down here to the bottom right and click the black and white circle and hit black and white. And there you go. Mine is already black and white, so I'll just get rid of that. And now you can just go into the blending modes, which is above in the properties panel and select lighten or screen. Most often it would be screen. And there you go. That's basically how you add textures to your photos. So you could leave it like this, but I am going to show you what I've learned to make it even better. I think it's something that's more simple and adds a, a little spice, a little spice to it, you know, and I have here like stuff to set up to show you guys comparisons and there are implications that you might run into when trying to blend the photos and to make it something that you enjoy. But before we dive deeper into that, let's just take a look to make this image better. So a very important thing I learned was that the more contrast the texture has before you blend it, the better or the more intense the texture will appear. I will dive deeper into what this means, but to add contrast, all you need to do, let me just change it real quick back to the normal blending mode so you guys can see this, is go back to the bottom right corner and then click contrast. This is one way you can do it and just crank that baby up. But as you can see, when I get rid of the picture, it, it's also affecting the image below. And to get to avoid that from happening, what you want to do is right click this, try to right click in the same area I am, and then create clipping mask. What this does is it, it only affects the image below it, as you can see that little arrow. And that way, now, as before, it's not as contrasted as much as before. Now, make sure you have the picture selected and change the blending mode back to screen. And here you could see the difference of what it does. It really makes the texture pop more, I say. If you guys are enjoying the tutorial so far, please leave a like, it does help out my channel. I really hope this is adding value to you. Now moving on, let's try to make it less pronounced in the photo. So, one way you can do that is just by lowering the opacity and you can do that right here just play with it see what you like and just like that it might sell it for you you could turn it off and on see what it's doing but what you can do is make a mask if you don't know this is what you're able to do with a mask so have your picture selected click the the mask button in the bottom right and this will make a white square in the bottom make sure the white square is selected go to your paintbrush tool on the side make sure your color black is selected and then you can paint away parts of the image let me raise up the opacity so you guys can see it more in motion so this is what the mask allows you to do if you're not selected on the white part you won't it won't allow you to make those adjustments so make sure you're on there and let's say you want to add a texture back. Just go down to the bottom left and switch to a white paintbrush. And that way you can paint it back. So let me just make a few adjustments to my liking. Um, I want his face to be more clear. I want his feet to be more appear too. But I also like it like that. Let's just 
rate, drop the opacity a bit more. And there you go. For the sake of this tutorial, I think that's pretty decent or the before and here's the added texture it really does add that little spice to it i think all right so now let's move on to the implications i ran into so hopefully you can avoid them too right here i have two photos they're the same and one is more contrasted than the other here you could see the contrast adjustment layer and in the back, you have a photo of my brother at Lake Tahoe. Then the textures you see are just textures of water that turned into black and white. Looks pretty crazy. And I just want to show you guys what happens when you try to blend it and see the difference between a contrasted, a very contrasted photo and a not so much one. Right off the bat, it might be hard to tell, but I think that the more contrasted one becomes blended more into the photo whereas this one you could still see a lot of like the gray mid-tones and that's to be expected i think that with the contrasted photo the texture is very more intense and rich and this one it's more soft and that could that's very useful depending on which way you want to draw your photo to like one side or the other and yeah so that's one way to make the textures pop or smooth is just by adding a lot more contrast to it. Okay, so for the sake for this example, I am gonna delete the less contrasted one because I personally like the the normal soft looking one. Let's just get rid of this contrast layer and just expand it. If you can press Command T to transform it. So again, let's just make a mask over the picture and make him more apparent by drawing him out. And something I didn't go over in the other photo is that you wanna make sure, so something I didn't go over in the last photo is the flow settings of your paintbrush. So make sure you have your paintbrush selected and you'll see these settings below or up above. And the one I wanna focus on is the flow. And to best explain it, it's basically the pressure you're applying using your brush. So if you were to think like a physical pen or a paintbrush, it's the pressure you're applying. If you press hard, that would be 100% and it would give you a deep stroke, a deep color of whatever pen or pencil you're using. But if you do it lightly, it's just gonna very show so very little show and that's what i mean by using the flow by 100 percent, you're pushing hard basically and it's changing the photo drastically but if we change that to 25 percent, it's not as hard or intense so best way to think about it is just pressure so another thing that I learned during this process was that you want to use textures intentfully. And with this photo, I learned that the water, by using a, like a water texture instead of, say, a, a rock or a concrete texture, it, it gives a different vibe. And I just want to show you guys that, for instance. So here I dragged in a rock texture, and let's just apply it. Okay, so I applied it and made a few adjustments. This is before, this is with the texture on it. And I personally think that it doesn't add anything too much to the photo. I think that the rocks in the photo itself are already apparent and adding a rock texture kind of just builds some noise. But in comparison to the water, I think that adds like, an, gives it like an aquatic feeling and even though there's water already in the photo, I think it pulls that feeling of the water even more. That's just a little personal preference. And so overall, just think of what you're using the texture for, what you want to emphasize, and I think you're going to end up with something you like. So now moving on to another tip I learned to spice up the texture is using the smart filters. And, and one I've been using lately a lot is just the Gaussian blur filter. And to access it, you just need to select the photo and go to the filter 
tab on the top, go to blur, Gaussian blur. It will bring up this window and you can adjust the intensity and you can see it working on the left and it gives you also a preview right there. And if you crank it up a lot, especially with this water texture I have, it just makes it look like a mist and a smoke and I, I find that very cool. I don't know about you guys, but in the photo I showed at the beginning of this video, I just wanted it to be more subtle so it bring you can get those water vibes, I guess. So I think two is enough. And there you have it, just another little way to add to the texture. So that brings me to the last way I've experimented with the texture. And one way I've used it in this photo is by adding it to the matte finish. So there is no texture in the photo itself. You do have like a little lens flare here, but the matte is called, this is what the matte is, the black border. And without the water texture, there it is. And I, as here you can see, I, I did the Gaussian blur effect. And both have flattering effects to it. I personally like it with the Gaussian blur. I think it gives it like that speakeasy vibes, like old vintage, like some smoke and mist in the air. I think this is too, too rough for my liking. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. My name is Aaron Arrow, and I make videos like this twice a week on the channel. So please leave a like and consider subscribing. I hope I really see you in the next one. Deuces.